Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Reactive Entrepreneur, the show where we combine the tech world with the business world in the hope that you learn something to help you achieve the success you're looking for. Today, we have a really cool guest on the show. It's a good friend of mine, and it's somebody who actually helped me source this beautiful thing on my wrist. It's somebody in the luxury watch world, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to introduce him. He's broken in, into the seven-figure market, and uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome session. So welcome, Mo, to the show. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me how are you doing dude amazing man excited yeah. i'm really excited for this one it's been something i've been wanting to do for a while i've been wanting to bring you on talk about it ever since i've literally got the watch from you so firstly who is big mo and what do you do in uh, dubai so basically big mo is a luxury watch broker okay um so um basically us versus other um if you want to say luxury watch sellers we have what we do differently is we don't go and hold inventory and like be like dealers, example, buying and selling and, and doing that thing is just a different market. How we wanted to separate it is more helping clients find their dream watch. Okay. So we see like example in the luxury watch world, like obviously the demand has been crazy. You can't go into stores. Yeah. Uh, number one is, you know, the customer service, how that is. And number two is, well, I, everyone wants the best price. Yeah. Especially when you come to luxury. So then how do you do that? I found there was a conflict of interest if I held inventory that I bought at X price, then I have to sell it. Okay. So people, you know, like at the beginning, it was like they were hard to understand. It's like, you know, why are you, how are you getting this price? Doesn't make sense. And then yeah. after they understand it, they're like, wow. So that was basically the, um, you know, the, the separation of me versus other uh, dealers out there in the market. Nice. And for a lot of our viewers, they don't actually understand or might not be introduced to this world at all. What is it that makes something like a watch so valuable to a lot of people that they're willing to pay things like, you know, ten thousand pounds upwards to even six figures, even seven figures at some points? What is it about it that makes it so special? So we'll we'll start off with example like the first thing people say is like, well, Mo, how come I can't go buy a watch at Rolex? So well, yeah. now the first thing is if you go into Rolex, there is not even in some places there's no waiting list. Yeah. So you're gonna go in, they don't have any stock. Yeah. And um. So that's number one. Number two is that like you're, we're talking about a watch with these are all, um, all these luxury watches are all handmade. So basically you're going to have every, all every, so basically what you're going to have is all these watches are handmade and they made limited editions of them. When right. I say limited editions, I mean um, like every brand has X amount that's being produced. So example, Rolex is only 800,000 yeah. versus X amount of models versus, you know, different configurations. So example, yours, you could come also an oyster bracelet, yeah. which is uh, the bracelet or Jubilee, like what I'm wearing. Yeah. So then you have different configurations. That's number one. So number two is also when you go into different ones like APs and Patex and everything, they have even less in yeah. even Richard Mill. So it's, it's all about production. How much are you producing? How much is going out there? Um, and also it's like it's it holds its value in terms of like you know, you go into a meeting right now and you're going to, people are going to see you wearing a watch. Like, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to think the best way to, to say that. A level of sort of, I don't want to use this word, but it's kind of a level of status when you walk into a room or. Like the quote I like to say is like a watch does not tell time. It tells you the, the value of your time. I like that. So like, like that. That, that's what I, uh, I like to say a lot. Um, I've watched so many watch videos. I'm not sure if I, like, I think I put it together. I can't, I watch it somewhere, but um, yeah. But yeah, the, what, what makes it honestly valuable is scarce. It's like it's very scarce. It's very rare. And it's also the level of difficulty nice. to get it. So let's go back to Rolex. Yeah. If you want to go into the store, mm -hmm. how are you going to get on the waiting list? This is something I suffered with, which, which is why I found you in the first place. So what you're going to do is like, and like other people's like, no, you know what? I have a Wasta. I have a connection. Yeah. I know somebody. They're going to go make those calls. Mm -hmm. And I used to be that guy that has a lot of these connections. Yeah. You can't, no, sorry, Mo, you have a waiting list. No, you need to do it. Why? Because... They know in the secondary market, so especially let's say Rolex, it's worth over twenty billion dollars. Yeah, to the point it's now, huge. Rolex opened a pre-owned department that they've launched because it's bigger Crazy. than the, reta the, the retail. Yeah. So you, let's say you're buying that. Let's say example, ten thousand dollars in the retail now is like twenty twenty-five. So if I'm a store, I'm just gonna go give you money. Yeah. No, Crazy, I need yeah. to, I need to make money. Yeah. So then you're gonna say, okay, well, you need to build your profile. So yeah. Inside. If they're only watches, it's it's fine. It's, you have to have a profile from before. Yeah. And if, for example, if it's mixed, some boutiques have jewelry also, they'll tell you, well, you have to buy this jewelry, you have to buy this and build a profile. And I've had clients that spend over $300,000 in jewelry stores that, you know, have the license to sell Rolex at retail and they still don't get the watches they want. And, yeah. And by time, people are seeing, like I know Bloomberg and everyone's seen that, that like, you know, watches return on investment outdid re real estate, outdid like stocks, gold and everything. Um, and the best way I would say luxury watches are simple. Yeah. It's like you have beautiful watches yeah. and jewelry combined. Nice. 
Very true. Second step is complication. Hmm. Yours is actually yours is a pilot watch. Yep. Yours has the Batman, um, which is the GMT two GMT Master two, can has three can tell three time zones. Yeah. So you have you know you could set it up for three time zones. Submariner, you know, it's for obviously uh, yeah. for divers and stuff like that. So these watches are actually tool watches. So if you go into complications, yeah, other ones could tell like the time, the date, the day date has the day and the date. Um, you know the sky dweller example yeah the day the date and the, the the month so it's also the complications and uh, when you go into other bigger brands so yeah. example like richard mill it's just like how like it absorbs the shock it's like crazy yeah so i, I posted a video about it where like you know take it richard mill um he just threw it on the ground and just showed like the watch is still working yeah even after smelling so every watch brand has its own uh nice. masterpiece behind it and that's what holds its value and it takes time to create yeah. So um, each Rolex watch takes one year to make. Yeah. So that took one year to make. Which is, is nuts to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, I really understand that point of what you said before, because I remember when I first wanted a Rolex, I went into the shop and I'll be honest with you, it was as if like there was no service at all. Like I would walk in. It's kind of like you looked at kind of like, oh, well, what are you doing here? Kind of vibe. Uh, and then I thought, okay, I'm not going to get anywhere with this, with this approach. Right. Um, they said there's no stock. That was it. Then I looked online. I found you. Uh, once I got this and I went into the shop to get a link removed, totally different story. I had a, you know, do you want to build up a profile here? Have you got a profile here? And then that's when the introduction of the talks of they were showing me a, um, uh, it was one of the introductory watches that Rolex begin to sell to get your profile started. And, uh, and then, yeah, that's how you, I guess, build that profile initially. Right. But big question, which is on everyone's mind, including mine is so, in a lot of businesses, something which is really challenging is finding customers in any shape or form, right? To fit your niche or your business in your specific area. It's actually, in my eyes, a lot harder because your range of customers is actually a lot of a higher price point. So where typically we're searching for somebody to buy a $220 product, $50 product or high ticket, $3,000, $5,000, that kind of level. Yours is in the $15,000 upwards to even hundreds of thousands, if not millions so how are you finding these kind of customers? What's your approach to that? That's a very good question. So, well, number one, which is not really anything, it's just your mindset. It's like, okay, you know, I'm like, obviously I believe in my network and everything, what you have, which is your your, your base. Yeah. So then after I'm like, okay, I, I reverse engineered. If I'm that client, how what would I want? Yeah. So the first thing is like what you just said before is um, customer service. Yeah. So example, a person inquiring, I, I treat everyone equally. I treat, when I say equally, I mean like, um, you're, you're polite. Some people are be like, you know, how much is this watch? And it'll be a $200,000 watch. They'll talk to them different. Like you don't have that money. Like, yeah. no, I don't do that. Yeah. Like I treat everyone with respect and nice. everything. Um, I think so at the beginning it was more like, um, f truth is funny to say, like at the beginning people thought I was saying fake watches. Yeah. So like, you know, um, my prior, I was in the event industry and I was very big in it. And what made that company successful was also the customer service. Yeah. So when I entered the like, you know, what's Big Mo doing going into the watches and a lot of ridicule. Um, and then you just focus on that and you just get like that one client. So it's like you go and you give a phenomenal service. Where are the questions? And you get to learn what the clients in this world, there's a lot of fear. Yeah. So there's the fear, like example, when we sat down, it's like, you know, oh, like huge. I, yeah. yeah. So, so there's a huge fear. It's like, what about this? And in our business, you buy the buyer. So it's yeah. like, how do you feel about this person, Mo? And um, example, now with the content I'm doing now, we're educating a lot. It's like, did you know this? Did you know that? Before, you know, I would always say, hey, we have this watch, um, showing it to, to people and everything. And it's building that, like, I guess the base where it's like you get that one good client, do one phenomenal service, everything. Like to start to go back, I'm like, let me be the client. Nice. Okay. So that's how I actually started. So I'm like, let me, I want to go buy a watch. Let me go out there and go buy a watch. Nice. So I go and try to go to everywhere and see the experience. And I talk to myself. I'm like, well, Mo, what are you looking for? Mm. Like you're saying the trust, the fake factor, uh, going on YouTube, trying to read everything about like if it's real, if it's fake, who the person is. Yeah. And another thing I did is I showed my face. Yeah. A lot of dealers hide their faces. Nice. Okay. So I said transparency. So my thing was 110% transparency. And you could tell if someone is trying to pull a quick one or someone's there like, you know, um, you know, that you're there to just do like a business. This is my new business. This is what I'm doing. And, and you know, I'm sourcing watches and everything. Yeah. So for that, I say like, okay, you know, I'm looking for a, a good educational page on Instagram. Nice. Pe person showing his inventory, people talking, looking at reviews. So if you go look at example on my profile, I focus a lot on the, on the reviews. I focus a lot on the, the content. Yeah. 
Um, and I've done a lot of slips. Like I've done, like tried to go into the ad world and try to advertise. That was a disaster. And yeah. it's like, that's not how it works. You gotta, you know, it's, you have to do it nice and slow. So it's like, like my, you know, my, my best friend, Nadim always tells me, he's like, Mo, nice and slow, man. It's don't, we're not in a rush for things. So do it nicely, get the word of mouth, get people to talk about you and give a phenomenal, phenomenal service. And anything that they need, you just give it to them with that, like white glove service that no matter how much money I make, I cannot replicate Rolex. Yeah. But I could, you know, give you a feeling that's better than Rolex. Like what you said when you walked in. It was huge. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. When you walked in, what did they say? Like you saw how they treated you. Oh, you, you, when I went into the shop. Yeah. To, to Rolex. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was awful. Yeah. Versus when you're talking to me, it's like, hey, Mo, this, how about this price? How about we do this? How about yeah. we do that? And I'm like, okay, no problem. And I'm understanding. And I'm like, I was beyond obviously say like the transaction we did was very transparent. Yeah. And it's like, well, I have this question. What about this? Yeah. And then after when we do the sit down, let me explain to you. Yeah. So sharing that knowledge, is this the feeling that you're going to have? I know this feeling. So once I went through that first time, yeah. you know, I, I'll, remember, I'll always remember your first time, I think more than mine. Yeah, <laughs> it was so nice. It touched me a lot just because it's like, I, I, I remember that feeling. Yeah. And then wanting to replicate that to others. So, um, and, and removing that fear and changing that fear into 10x trust. Yeah. That like, you know, this person, like, like I told you, like, right. It was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm like, you want to go get it verified? Sure. You want to go to the Rolex or sure. I'll come with you. Yeah. So when they see that, that just creates trust. I agree. And yeah. why I love it is because it's the most sensitive thing in the world. Massive. I could go sell a product example. It's an iPhone case or even like, you know, a little leather pouch for your, for your watch and everything. But I want it to be so sensitive that like that word of mouth goes, it's like, a, like it goes like wildfire when they say it's like, no, I trust that person. Yeah. And that's because of something so sensitive, so um, fragile. Yeah. And then that's the pressure. That's that's what sets you apart. So then it's not like, like, and I think the first thing is for me to acknowledge that. Yes. Yeah. So like to me, it's like, hey, it's not like, it's like, oh, hey, what do you want? Uh, you know, like, oh, you want a case? You want a green, green, purple, yellow? Like it doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. So it's like when you understand that, be patient with yeah. them. Because a lot of the times, again, I think it's just, my business model is like I'm not stressed because I'm like the market's up today, the market's down today. Yeah, it doesn't affect me. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm focusing all that energy into the customer service journey, um, the meeting, the the understanding, and I, I think that's um, that's where it started. But I also think it's the mindset is like, hey, can you sell a fifteen thousand dollar watch? Yes, yeah. I can. Nice. Then can I sell a half a million dollar? Yes, I can. Can I sell a million dollar? Yes, I can. Yeah. Then it's like how. Then you do these baby touch points, like yeah. from the talking. Like I have it in different stages there, but yeah. Um, before like, before yeah. we jump into that sector, which is a conversation in itself, I think it's really powerful to touch on what you said and basically about putting yourself in the position of the person trying to buy the watch. That's like phenomenal because a lot of the time when we're selling a product or doing anything, it's like how can I get somebody to just say yes and do this? That's kind of like the first instinct that people might think when they're in sales or any anything to do with selling any kind of product or service when really, like you said, you should be looking in the eyes of the person actually buying because the difference between you and other sellers or other dealers that I was look like talking with was it was exactly that. It, it was more of a conversation where I was asking you like, you know, how do I know it's not fake and ABC and like, and you weren't, you know, rushing me. It was, you gave me people to go ahead and verify it with. You said we can go to Rolex directly after to get it sized. All of these touch points made a huge impact because what you're doing is you're building that trust with me. And that was totally different to the experience I was having with others. With others, it was very much a case of, do you want it now or not? Because I have five people that want to buy it. And it's like, well, I don't want to deal with that. I, I Because to me, it was a lot of money. It feels like a lot of a big decision. It is, it is a lot of money. And when you're not used to buying at that level of like a luxury good, it can be so, like it's a scary, intimidating place, right? Um, so I think you are doing an amazing job in understanding you. that, the way you presented it. Even to down to the details, when I turned up at your place, it was honestly like a white glove service. It was incredible. The unboxing, you guys can check it out on the channel. There's a vlog where we literally showcase it all. But it was, you know, that in itself builds an entire layer of trust to the point where, like you said, it, then it's word of mouth. At that point, I have no, you know, hesitation in saying, you need a watch, come to Big Mo. I trust the hell out of the dude. I've gotten verified once and I don't feel like I need to get the future ones verified because... I trust you. And that's what you said. You're buying the dealer in this space, which I think is phenomenally powerful. Um, so yeah, that's, I just wanted to touch on that because it's a really, really like strong point. 
so now you're moving into the second area that we were talking about, right? So let's say it's about believing that you can actually sell a half a million dollar watch or something like that, right? What was it like mindset wise that got you from a point of feeling like that? Because in the beginning, naturally, you don't just wake up and say, I can sell a half a million dollar watch. Like how, how do you get from like zero to that point? You have good questions, huh? <laughs> um, how do you believe? Um, you know, it's crazy because the, the first month, I remember like yesterday, the first month I, uh, the first month I, was, I, I started getting into it and seeing like, hey, is this possible? Yeah. Um, I sold uh, the Superman. Uh, it's called the Superman. So it's a Pepsi uh, white gold on meteorite dial. Nice. Okay. Um, and it was just, you know, with the service word of mouth. Yeah. And uh, then he ended up taking a platinum Daytona. Wow. Uh, and then this guy was one of the biggest clients. And um, yeah. I, I, like, I guess to me, my whole life is always doubt. Like people like doubting me is like, oh, well, how are you going to, you know, you're going to pull this off. You're going to pull like, like, I, I think I just highly believe in myself. Like I'm like for me, it's just I have this like. I'm I'm obsessed with like I love like like the Michael Jordans of the world, uh, you know even Kobe Bryant love him a lot. Muhammad Ali is just like trying to be the best. A lot of people don't think that like example they're like okay well you know just want to pass by and go through that. It's like no how do I become the best? Yeah, and it's something my father told me. It's like be the best. I don't care what you do, just be the best. If you're gonna be even as something as simple as a, a garbage man, be the best garbage man in the entire world. Yeah, I so completely ha agree. Having with that. this, like I even remember that conversation with my father when he pulled me aside and talked to me about that. And I think then it's just like, you know, building confidence in yourself and it's my surroundings like, okay, Mo, no, you could do this, do this. And it's like, it's like, like, it's funny. Cause like, even when I was one day, I was just going home with my, like going home to see my parents and my mom was like, oh, you're wearing a Pepsi. Mm. And then, you know, your parents now are getting involved in the education yeah. of watch. My dad sending me videos. So I think it's just like when you have the support, yeah. like I think your surroundings, it's, it has to be amazing. It's like, yeah, man, yo, watch business is amazing. And that's the thing which differentiated my circle at the beginning which is like you have the people that are hyper supportive yeah then the other people that are just you know it is what it is on, yeah. on the other side yeah so i think it's just just believing is like hey just like like opportunity comes show up yes. opportunity comes show up so it's like hey mo okay i'm i'm i'm, I'm can you uh, can you get this watch can you do this 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 no, yeah no problem but my main focus is not money yes i love that yeah but this is something a lot of people get wrong because what it's like my example my first business which was in the event industry yeah it got big by itself i did not i didn't know that was a shocker for me i didn't know I could, it could get that big to me it was just do the best you can mo and just go and then lo and behold i've done some, was some crazy crazy fun fun times being a student yeah <laughs> and then when i'm like you know what let me go make money yes and let me start a startup and do this that's when i lost the most money yeah i burnt the most money and then when i'm like let me focus on the client experience everything then it's like, okay, now educating myself. So yeah. obviously after I bought my first watch, the second thing, I first thing is like, what's the most expensive Rolex? Yeah. Then you see like, you know, plat like one of them is Platinum Daytona. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, it's funny. My mom loves that watch the most. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, mama, one day, inshallah. That's it. Goes. Um, so I think it's just having that mindset is like, yes, you can. There's a client for that. You know, you never know. Yeah. So when you have that confidence, like, you know what? I can close. I can close. And I guess I th honestly, what drives me is that the tout the people have in me. So then I'm like, like listen i play a lot of basketball to me it's like always like that it's like i don't have to be the fastest you know the, the jumps the highest but i'm like guys i'm gonna go win i'm gonna show you i'm gonna win nice. I'll hit, even if i'm down 10 i'll come back and win yeah so it's it's that it's in me that drive but it has to be in your mindset that like yeah. i have an opportunity yeah. you jump on it you show up and you deliver yeah i'm not gonna say oh, i'm gonna go make 20k today yes i, I think this is this, you're setting yourself up for failure i completely agree with that if yeah. you tell me more how much did you make on that piece, i don't even remember yeah but to me it's just like it's it's like a, a milestone oh boom i've sold my first superman boom i sold my first platinum that was in my first month i'm like man you know man god's blessed me yeah. so much like alhamdulillah there was a huge blessing but yeah this is where i see it but it's like you have to just I feel some people are actually scared of their own greatness. I completely agree with that. I think it's a scary place, uncomfortable, right? Yeah, but it's, it's my dad always tells me that. Like he's like, he's like, how are you gonna go big? So it's like, you know, it's like in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sell to, you know, like, I'll even say it, like, he's like, okay, I want to go. You know, one day maybe I'll sell to you know Leo Messi. Yeah. One day, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go deliver a watch. You know, maybe Michael Jordan can't get a specific watch. Maybe whatever it is. But do you believe in that? Yeah. 
And it's like, yeah, I, I do believe. And let me get there. Something, maybe it won't happen that exact way. Yeah. But it'll happen in different ways. Example, when, you know, I end up uh, uh, selling watches to Team Canada when they came to Qatar. Yeah. Nice. So like, you know, that was like, like it was surreal for me. But like to me, when I went in to deliver those watches, they're like, my friend's like, Mo, are you friends with them? I'm like, I just met them. They're like, well, how are you like? I'm like, it's the friendly approach. You go and talking to them, even from the get go, when you're having that conversation, yeah. when you meet them, they're like, it's like, it's relationship. And like I was saying uh, in the delivery, when we're delivering, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a salesperson transaction, how much yeah. and, and calculating on mm -hmm. that. It's building relationship re relationships. And I have never seen, maybe in the crypto world, yes, but like mm. when you're building something, like what you're doing, what I'm doing, it takes time, man. Yes, it does. And you're going to get good at it at like year five, six, seven, maybe the first five years is when you prove the point, then like year 10, 15 is like, okay, now you're, you're, you're milking it. But sometimes you don't go look back at like, oh, look what I've done. All yeah. that. I think with the resources now, yeah. everything could be 10x, 20x, even 100x. 100, yeah. But your values and morals of what you're doing that's what has to be in the front line. Yeah. So like when I went and did the service and then I learned from that. Mm. Um, and like, you know, I, I've had a lot of people that help me. Like my friend Sam is like, Mo, you're going to do something. You're scared. Do it scared. Yeah. You know, you want you want to do it. Just go and show up. There's an opportunity. Don't hide from it. And don't be afraid of your own greatness. A hundred percent. And you know what? Those values and morals that you're speaking about really does radiate through what you post. Every interaction you're doing, all of the touch points that I have with you, besides when we're together physically, is you know mainly Instagram, where you're posting content. And all of that is not about selling. It's not about, it's informing, because you're focusing on that customer you know, experience and actually informing customers. Like I didn't know so much about Rolex until I started following your channel. And honestly, uh, I'd recommend anyone, and anyone's interested, they definitely check you out, Big Mo on Instagram. And that is what made me think, you know what? Actually, I had no idea this thing even glowed in the dark yeah. until I saw it on one of your videos. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, does it? I was like, that's crazy. Um, but it's it's stuff like that that shows somebody your true you know, interest in the, in, in the field. And then as a result of that, things like money, things like you know growth, it comes as a side effect. And I think a really strong thing you said is like, you know, even manifesting it in the sense of where you're like, I will sell to Leo Messi. I'll sell to, you know, these big figures and look at what's happened. Right. Even when we had a conversation before in Dubai more, um, you mentioned that, you know, you actually you actually met one of your like, you know, your kind of idols in the space. So the let's talk about that. The Michael Jordan of watches himself. Yeah. So this is, so how does that happen? Because in that case, that was something which I think you, you know, should be massively proud of. Like that's like hitting a goal, right? In your space. <laughs> that's that's beyond a goal, my friend. That's Amazing. Like, that's winning the World Cup, man. That's nice. um man, that I have to first of all thank my team for that. So you know, you're very consumed in your day to day. Like you say, we're very fast paced, especially here in Dubai, man. It's like yeah, you know, it's like a year goes by like it's a month, it's crazy. So um, basically, uh, let's make it long story long, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, my marketing team sends me videos like, yo, Nico, Mo, Big Mo, Nico's in Montreal, um, Nico's in Dubai. Yeah. So Just I'm, for everyone that doesn't know, who is Nico? So Nico Leonard is the, basically the biggest watch YouTuber in the world. He has yeah. over 1.3 million. Um, in terms of content creation, in terms of watches, it's beyond inspired me. Uh, a lot of my knowledge... Everything I learn is a lot from him. He makes it super fun. Yeah, uh, I would love to one day be like that, but I, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I'm a, there, there's levels of humors and things I have it, but like for me, like I, I like everyone says, like there's only one Nico. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's only one Michael Jordan. There's only one everyone Nico. has their style, right? Yeah, and his style. But it's like the thing is, like um, obviously, like after meeting him, um, working with him, and, and chilling with him, um, that is him. Yeah. Like even with no camera, that is him. Which is genuine. Like yeah. like he's genuine, amazing guy. Love like is loves what he does. Um, um, and like for him, it's like it's just like he's super proud that like like he calls it like you know we're nerds in terms of the watch business and everything. Yeah. And he's like super proud that like it's gone to where it's gone. And maybe because of him, like he's made it like you know people know about watches, people learning, people seeing. So um, and he just makes it so entertaining. But it's like, well, how do you take something like this and make it so entertaining? But remove watch this is who nico is yeah like, that's how he is so when he came to dubai it's like oh Mo, look nico just launched the video that he's in dubai i'm like okay cool so um and usually it's, it's weird because all his videos i watched yeah and then i get caught up and then i'm like you know it's like i didn't see that one so i go watch it. i'm like oh shit like he's like yo he's coming to dubai so i send it to my friend i'm like he's like uh he's like wow man nico's coming to, to dubai that's crazy yeah 
then he saw the video. He's like, oh, no, more. this was in January because it was a golf course. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Then I go on Instagram. I go, I click. I'm like, dude, the guy's in the palm. What is he talking about? Yeah. I'm like, he's here. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, my God. Wow. So I'm like, so then I right away wrote to him. His friend's like, DM him, DM him. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to DM him. He's not going to answer. He's like, DM him. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I go, I DM him. I'm like, hey, Nico, hope as well. So you came to the buy if you need anything. Because here's a very different market. Yeah. That's another conversation about how the watch market is here. It's completely different because it's very massive. And yeah. it's, the way people are is very different. So I'm like, if you need anything, you know, I have a lot of experience. I'm here to help. Let me know. Yep. No reply. Uh, then what's crazy is that he then goes and posts a video. Hey, guys, I want to do a watch meetup. So he does these watch meetups. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a watch meetup. Just DM now in the box below if you guys want to come to meet up at his uh, uh, place. Yeah. So right now, and he doesn't answer. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? Meanwhile, so so this is happening. Down, I'm like, man, what, what's going on? This guy's not answering. So I'm like, all right, fine. So then I just write under that, hey, Nico, would really love to meet you. Let yeah. me know uh, what what time the, the meetup is on Wednesday, and I'll be there. Yeah. No answer. So then, so on this week, so this was like on a Sunday. Then I'm supposed to actually um, fly out Tuesday to Saudi with my uh, my best friend Nadim. We're supposed to go to Saudi. He's like, oh, you could go do a Umrah, go to Mecca and everything. It ends up the flight being too expensive. I don't go. Yeah. Then on Monday, my friends decide, my, my other friend decides to fly in from LA. Okay. Okay. So then he flies in, flies in from LA. He's like, yo, mom, I'm in Dubai. So I'm like, come pick me up. So I end up like, wow, that flight, that trip got canceled. Go pick him up. Yeah. So then this was like Monday. Then he's jet lagged. So he's like sleeping all day. Tuesday comes. I play basketball Tuesdays. So then he's in town. I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm not going to go to play the ball. I'm going to wait for him to, to wake up. He goes, wakes up. He's lost in Dubai Mall. Okay. Obviously, who doesn't get lost in Dubai Mall? Yeah, it's, it's bloody huge. Yeah. So he's like, mom, I'm in, I'm in the nice areas. They're like, uh, what's going on? And I'm like, yo, I'm outside Fashion Avenue. Where are you? He's like, I don't know. Come get me. Yeah. So this is Tuesday. As I'm walking in, so this is like 11.45 p.m. As I'm walking in, talking on the phone with him, uh, my friend, uh, as, as thank you very much for getting lost in Dubai Mall. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. Um, as he's walking in, I'm on the phone, and then I'm like, Nico, Nico, Nico. He's like, bro, what's wrong with you? I'm like, it's Nico. He's like, bro, what's, what's wrong? I'm like, bro, let me call you back. Let me find I just seen Nico. Yeah. Um, Nico, his, uh, his wife, is newborn, Nico Jr., yeah. Miguel, and uh, his, their friend, Victor, um, walking by himself. Nice. Yeah. In Fashion Avenue, by himself walking out. I'm like, I was, guys, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big guy. I'm like, you know, uh, six, six, two meters. And I'm like, hey, it's the f by the way, I do not approach people. I do not yeah. talk people. Um, while I was waiting, actually, for his, the entire UFC team was going inside shopping. People were taking pictures like crazy. Yeah, it's always all kinds of celebrities by my. I don't. I think there's like a handful of people I would go out of my way. I don't. I think maybe Michael Jordan and Nico would be the only two. Yeah, I would think of the other. You know, Leon. I, 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 I wouldn't do it to be honest. Yeah. So he's in, he's in like just you know he's very inspiring for me at least for everything I learned. Yeah. So I went up to him like, hey, I'm a big fan. He's like, oh, thanks, man. And we're talking like, you know, I saw, you, you know, you're in Dubai and like you had the meetup. He's like, man, it was too crazy. I got too much response. Yeah. It's like my team takes care of my social. I'm like, ah, oh. I'm like, you know, if you need anything, you know, this is why I got into this space. Yeah. He's like, oh, really? He's like, okay. He's like, you know, can you, can you source me, you know, this watch? I'm like, yeah, let me know. I'll, you know, let me try to, you know, let me get it. Let me, I'm on it. Let me, let me, let me do it. Yeah. So I go source to watch right away, man. Like, and by the way, I'm shaking. Like after Nico, like we meet up, he starts laughing when he meets me in person. He's like, Mo, I've never seen a big guy shake as much as you. I'm like, Nico. And Mo, man. Mo's a big guy. I, I feel like I'm tall and <laughs> uh, man, you make me even look small. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man, no, I was, sh I was shaking to the point. He's like, yo, Mo, you want me to take the picture? So I ended up taking a picture with him and people like thought it's like, oh, just a groupie picture, but it was like bigger than that. Yeah. And what's crazy the night before, when my friend Ayaz came from LA, right. we're sitting down in the lobby, 3 a.m. I'm like, bro, how do you keep going, man? Yeah. He's like, Mo, one more. Right. Mo, one more call. Yeah. One more message. One more. It's like the power of just one more. Nice. And I'm like, and it hit me. So I'm like, Mo, one more, one more. So, and, and at the time, I'm like, okay, let's go. So then I go, I get the watch, I source it for him. No answer. So then the next day, obviously, Ayaz is all, um, jet lagged he's like let's go eat then he's like oh what happened with you i'm like oh, i didn't reply i guess he's very busy hmm. then boom right away sends a voice note mo i need a chocolate dial uh 
uh, rose gold day date right now. Can you go get it? I'm yeah. like, done. Yeah. And what's crazy, man, is that this is what's crazy. So this is my story. Yeah. There's another person in the story who I actually got the watch for, which was Zarek. Zarek ends up like, long story short, he ends up losing his, he actually had it with Batman. He ends up oh, losing yeah. it at the airport. Oh, no way. Yes. Yeah. And then he was at the St. Regis. Yeah. And by coincidence, Nico is in the elevator with Zarek. And then oh Zarek bought that Batman from Nico's website, which is Pride and Pinion. Yeah. So Zarek goes to him, he's like, oh shit, you're Pride and Pinion. Yeah. And he's like, yo, how do people, Nico's like, how do people know me? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for another watch. I need a watch. Wow. What's the probability? Yeah. Zarek and Nico are in the elevator at the same time while he just goes lose his watches at the airport. It's that's crazy. Yeah. Like you, the stories, when you see the, all the stories intertwining, yeah. it's like, like, I feel some things are meant to be, it's meant to be, yeah. but it's like, do you believe in that? And I think that's like you, what you're talking about manifesting. I'm like, I wrote, Hey, what time Wednesday I'm going to see you. Yeah. So like we were saying, long story long. Um, so I ended up getting the watch. Yeah. Um, my bad is I had to ditch you that day. <laughs> um, so yeah, I ended up getting the watch to go see him. Uh, I was, it was surreal to me. Um, met Zarek Lucas and there was also a lot of other people um, that showed up there that day and yeah. um, delivered the watch to him. He's like super happy. In the video you see me, I'm like the happiest kid yeah. in the world. Nice. And um, uh, yes, yeah, so we ended up chilling and then ended up meeting Nico, talking with him. And it was just like, you know, he's like, I'm like, you know, I'm just starting. He's like, Mo, I used to be where were you at? And this is something I'll never forget. Yeah. How this man was so kind, open hearted, and like with his status, guys, I don't think you understand this. Again, this is the Michael Jordan of watches. Yeah. Like he everyone, is that, yeah. He's got a huge following. Yeah. Like even all the dealers in the world, they all talk about him. So yeah. he's like, you know, I used to be where you're at, Mo, and just to go out to help me. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, and again, it's an opportunity. Don't be scared. It's like, Mo, go, 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 yeah. go. This was my friend, uh, as is telling me. Um, to me, it was honestly, it was surreal. Um, and that says, like, whatever your dream, go even bigger. Yeah. The funny point about the story, guys, I wrote, what time Wednesday will I be seeing you? I delivered the watch on a Wednesday. Yeah. So it was the next day that I delivered them. And it was like, I'm looking at that message in my DM always. I'm like, well, it's crazy, man, when you, like, it's like you have this, like, I don't think if it's, I say it's obsession, but it's like, to me, it wasn't like, uh, so there's no price point. Like, there's not, I'm going to make this much money or everything. Yeah. It's just about... The level of the success, the people you want to go be around. So like now Nico knows who Big Mo is. You know yeah. what I mean? Huge, yeah. So it's it's funny. It's funny because he was on a podcast too. Yeah. While I was sourcing the watch uh, for him. So yeah, man, it was it was surreal. Um, that night, I'll never forget it ever. Uh, it's It was like I felt it was a, a, a dream. I, I don't know. It, it was crazy. And, and it's funny. Even Iman, I think. Uh, not, I think Iman was there. He, yeah. So also Nico was doing... Um, did a whole uh, vlog with Iman yeah. uh, talking about his watch collection, which is, you know, was phenomenal to see him. And guys, like I said, Nico in person, in video. Yeah. The most genuine man, kindest person I, I've ever met. It makes me a better person. Uh, thank you very much, Nico. <laughs> I'll never forget this, man. Thank you. But That's huge. And I think for him, he inspires me. Does that like a lot of people have this stereotype that like when people have success or something, yeah, they're different, man. Between him, his, his wife, his friend Victor, um, Miguel's wife, man, there's just amazing, amazing, amazing people. And nice. I think um, people will look at him like you know, with, if you want to talk about his watch collection, his watch knowledge, I think is phenomenal. But I think they should, you know, if, at least for me, it's like you know, judge the person of his level of success, but his level of kindness and um, humanity, like helping other people when he has the chance to do that. And, you know, um, since then, man, we've been working together and, and you know, I've been helping him like crazy here. And it's, it's, it's honestly an honor. It's, it's, it's um, lost of words, man. That's powerful, man. That is a crazy. Um, firstly, thank you for sharing this story because I think that's powerful. And so I remember you told me in Dubai more, but it was just something I had to bring up today as well because the, the effect it has is so incredible. And, and there's certain gems in that story where, like, for example, your friend said, you know, Mo, one more, one more. And this is something, ironically, me and Jay have had before as well, where, you know, we get to points where it's just like, you know, we hit a wall and we're just like, how, you know, I say the same thing. Like, when are we going to, you know, break through on YouTube? When are we going to do this and that? And you release a video and it's just that like, one more, you know, just push one more. And then, bam, a video goes viral and then yeah. you grow. It's But it happens when you least expect it. It's not yeah. like you're just chilling. It's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. We just, just went viral. I'm like, yeah. And like, what's crazy is that, like, we were both like, dead like he was here for like work and he's just like i'm like why are you here he's like mo for one more yeah and i remember Crazy. it was like 3 a.m at the lobby and we're just talking and i'm like 
and we're barely dragging ourselves back home <laughs> yeah to go knock out but it was just like and it's i think it's also how he said it mm. he believed it 110 percent that made me believe it nice. and, and i'm like because obviously you guys don't know where it is but like he's he's always like outgoing let's go let's go i'm like dude like how, what keeps you going yeah like what keeps you driving and it's like the power of just one more but he's not chasing the money it's not like one more that's million. the key part yeah it's like like i find what's written is written and i feel one of the things that i written is the money part but like exactly like who you meet how you change people's lives like if i'm a billionaire i can't go buy this experience that nico just gave me for example yeah i know and, the, and then he also judges the person see how the person is and everything obviously we, you know we after that, we've been doing like, um, you know, good business together, a lot of business together. But you see who the person is and it's yeah. his hospitality, who he is as a person and everything. It's crazy. But what's crazy is that what that one more. That one more opens up now your level of confidence changes. Exactly. Now that your level of example, knowledge changes, your level of network changes. You like it just that one door that or that wall you're saying once it comes down. Yeah. What's behind that door? It's like it's like as if it's like a whole empire, another world that you're like, oh, my yeah. God. It, it was worth it after all. But yeah. I think it meets more the details, like like the fact that Nico and Zark crossed paths and elevated. The fact I decided, which I never cancel basketball. Yeah. You know, like I enjoy the trash talking on yeah. the court with the guys, but like I don't cancel. Um, this is the thing, right? Opportunities come up in the craziest situations, right? Where like all odds are, you know, things happen in crazy or pat different patterns out of the regularity and, and then an opportunity comes up. And I think the key thing is, you take the opportunity when it comes up. Like you said, you saw Nico. Some people might get, you know, oh, should I, should I not? Or they talk to him and then, you know, even, you know, a little interaction might be enough for some people. But you said, you know, let me know if you need anything. And you put out your service and he said, you know, yeah, actually I need something. Cool, I got you, you know. And you could have easily in that moment thought, I don't want to disappoint him. Oh, I'm actually really busy right now. or made up some excuse or anything else. In that situation, you took the opportunity. And then even then afterwards, you had a sort of pushback where you said, yeah, he might be busy. He's not messaging me. Bam, he comes back with another opportunity. I got you. That is, that is the difference, I think, between opening that door into that a whole nother world and just simply staying behind it forever. Right. Because that one more can keep getting you like more and more luck to those that exposure. But when it comes, you have to actually do something about it. Right. And that's what exactly what you did. You have to show up, man. But like. Again, my, my other friend, Samer, like it's crazy because everything that came to this point is crazy. A lot of people have just touched me and it's like, listen, it's like, Mo, just do it scared. And I do not approach people. Yeah. I do not go talk to people. It's just not me, man. I'm, yeah. My brother, yes. Yeah. My brother's an extrovert. He'll, he'll go and talk. I'm an introvert. Like, yeah. people's like, how do you do what you're doing? I'm like, this is what I'm doing to like, you know, it's a level of, I guess, learning to adapt myself to evolve. And yeah. that's what I do it. But like, I did it scared and... And you know, it's funny because at the house, he was laughing so hard. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I've never seen a big guy shake so much. And, yeah. like, and then Victor's like, yeah, man, that was hilarious. And it's like, oh, my God. It's like, and it's because it, there's also the the, percep the perception of the other person when they see you. Yeah. Which is something you don't see in yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah definitely. So, so, yeah, man, it was, it was, um, again, man, it was, it was something I'll never forget. So it, it, was, awesome. it was a phenomenal, small experience. And I'm, I'm like, it's, it's crazy how that that whole together, yeah. that whole thing yeah like you said once that wall is done it just changes your world it's never the same again that's it and i think even that is a key to like for example through that experience now your network expanded right yeah so a lot of the time when we talk about networking i get this question a lot on our channel in our mentorship course in in every angle of business that we do this question comes up with how do you network and a lot of the times people gen gen the generic answer is go to you know a watch conference go to a software developer conference and that's not genuinely how it always works out in real life right i think the reality is like like you said you should have a passion for something or actually genuinely care besides the money and then you'll realize more and more like you keep doing these deals like one more one more you keep pushing 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 what opportunity comes up take the opportunity that in itself can open up a door like we said this whole conversation has been about you know you get an opportunity that pops up that then can unlock that network or different circle of people. And that's how I found realistically things have happened for me in terms of network building. What is your take on that? Like, have, do you feel like there's been specific things that you've done to increase your network or is it more through those interactions that it's kind of happened? Man, who, who wrote these questions? Man? These are very good questions. <laughs> these are all like, <laughs> these are very good top questions. Top of head. Man, <laughs> top of head. <laughs> 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 you have a super mind. <laughs> so, um, so so the first one is like i think it's like it's like 
what are your intentions? Okay. So example, when you're talking about networking, it's like, well, where do you go? Well, my intention is to help. My intention, if your intention is like, well, I'm going to go network with these rich people because I could go, quote unquote, milk them or yeah. get something out of them. Well, th- these are your wrong intentions. If your intention is like, hey, I want to build my brand. I want to build, like for me, it's like trying to put respect in the, in the, in the secondary watch market, like to, 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 to create this experience that nobody does. And it's like a lot of people, like you're saying, the first thing you think of gray market, you think, you know, fake. Yeah. Well, why can't you think legitimacy and everything? So that's like, you know, my goal and, you know, uh, of, of doing that. So when it comes to networking, for me, it's like, so when I was younger, I always thought, I'm like, your network is your net worth. So mm-hmm. that's why I built my, you know, back in Canada and Montreal, like I built a very big network, yeah. like huge network. This I is was, during your event. Yeah. So my event yeah. days is, yeah. is like just networking, meeting with people. So I did a lot through basketball. So I did it through things that I love, but like it wasn't. Like, again, it's just your intentions. So yeah. It's like, what are the intentions? So I'm going networking because I want to learn from people. Yeah. So my networking is more of knowledge. So what can I learn from, example, if I'm playing basketball, if I'm playing football, what am, what am I learning from when I'm going to school and studying together? So I'm just networking with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and that it's not it's like, oh, I'm going to go meet with this person so I could tell them for tell them buy a ticket to my event or something. I'm, that's not what I do. That's the young Mo, which is different. Yeah. The older Mo now... I'll go with what my father told me. Is like, let the world run after you. Don't run after the world. Nice, I like that. Yeah. Because if you let the world run after you, you like your job is just to show up. So it's like, hey Mo, what are you doing? Yo, come here. Yo, we got a podcast. Let's, let's get on this spot. Okay, boom, I'm there. Boom, I'm there. So it's like opportunities were come, but it's like positioning yourself with the right people going out there talking. But I'm saying, it's like, hey, what are you doing? Like example, if you're going to a coffee shop and you're talking, whatever, you could do that. But I don't think it's just like, like I've done the whole like, okay, message this person, message this person. I just find it doesn't work just because it's just like your intentions are wrong. It's like, well, I need to make sales. I need to do this. Like, I'm not going to open the topic on other industries, but a lot of them do that. And it just becomes yeah. very uncomfortable. And it's like, so I, for me, I think it's also networking with the right people. What is network? Network is trust. That's, that is literally it. Yeah. So it's like, do you trust this person? Yeah. So you're saying, well, how do I start? Well, from my previous world, like in the event world, well, I built that trust that like, you could hate Big Mo. You yep. can not like Big Mo. You can never say Big Mo screwed anyone. Mm-hmm. And you cannot say Big Mo's not trust trustworthy, mm-hmm. not honest. But you cannot like me. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this about him. That's fine. That's your personal opinion. Yeah. But you could say this guy was was kind. He was trustworthy. He always showed up. Yeah. Win or lose, he showed up. I showed up. So I think that's why it comes with with networking. Now, there's other ways of networking. Like, let me go to the example in Dubai and to the Arts Club, which is a very high end. Um, uh, I guess it's like a membership uh, club type of thing. Yeah. But like to me, it's just, again, it's not, it goes back to genuine, like being genuine. Like when we met and we talked, like we just, like you just click, like, you know, we see a lot of things similar. Yeah. You know, I left Canada, you left the UK and then we both have very similar stories. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it's like, okay, well now, so now I tell you, it's like, well, how do you network in Dubai when you're starting from zero? Yeah. So then it's like, well, now it's like, okay, let's have with this idea, your team. So you have a good team. So example with my team, like, hey, Mo, Nico's here. Hey, Mo, what are you doing? Come over here. Yep. Hey, Mo, what are you doing? So you surround yourself. That's the first thing I did. Amazing people around me. Code and roll, yeah. And then I'll go with them. And then you just go. So that's why, it's like, Mo, I'm coming over here. Come, let's meet this person. Let's meet this person. And you'll see eventually you do it. But I focus on my craft, which is what is your ultimate goal and what you're trying to do in your business. Yeah. And a lot of, unfortunately, the younger generation, which, you know, I've had interns and everything, I tried to help, but their obsession with money and fame and power, yeah, with all due respect, is ridiculous. Yeah, I completely agree. Because, you know, in my old business, like, I understand where Nico's coming from because I had that. And I'm like, yeah, it's not healthy. Yeah. Like, I want a circle that's small, that's trustworthy. I don't have someone that's going to, sta- like, you know, stab me in the back or whatever. But also build from that, that you have the, the proper vision together and grow together. And you'll see this, like, well, I met this one person that then goes meet this person that, that met that person. Exactly. But like that, like example, the first, um, like example, the first deal I did, um, which was with the with the Superman and the Daytona Platinum Daytona, that you know was a very yeah. big client. That was word of mouth. Yeah. So that word of mouth went from like my dad's like, oh, this guy's an entrepreneur. Go meet with him. I'm meeting with him. My dad's going to gym. Meet with this person. Mo, meet with this person. You could get along. I didn't know that guy was going to refer me to this client. Like exactly five yeah. years from now. Yeah. How do I know that? Yeah. But I think that's the problem. Now, the, the new generation coming up, they expect an immediate result. They expect from this conversation right now. I'm entitled. Now, like, I, yeah. I'm all to this. I'm on yeah. planet Earth. This is it. Yeah. I should get something from this conversation. You got, you got, that's, the, you got the fresh Yeezys. You know, you got a couple of Yeezys now. <laughs> I'm entitled. This is what it is. I, yeah. I show up and it's like, but it's like, no, I want it. 
what, yeah. what do you mean I want it? Like I want it, boom, it's, you're not supposed to work for it. Yeah. But it takes time. Exactly. But but that's why I learned let life run after you. Don't run after it. Because if you run after it, man, you're going to be exhausted. And the craziest thing, yeah. you will never be satisfied. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that is the younger mo. Yeah. Where it's like just go, go and go and go run, 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 run. My mom's like looking at me. He's like, yeah, I, like, you know, there's only like 24 hours in a day. Uh, I think the way you're working is like you're trying to create an extra five just to do more. I'm like, yeah, going, going. But now it's like how to work smarter, how to do everything. But it's also like, like, enjoy life, man. Like, have fun. I think it's also there's a lot of stress where you know, my friend's like, Mo, when's the last time you had fun? Like, have fun. Yeah. Like, have fun through the process. So mm -hmm. like w when we're meeting, when we're delivering, I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm having fun when I'm doing this. I'm having fun. Yeah. So it's like have fun, enjoy life. And I don't know who created this. Yeah. But there's a pressure that like I got to be here, 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 or else I'm a failure or I'm not successful. It's this hustle culture of even waking up at like 5 a.m. every day. Otherwise, you're, you're not successful. It's it's I guess like, I'm not successful. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nobody buys a watch at 5 a.m. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, it's about what you're doing when you're up. Like, it's not you, there's no specific set rule of you have to wake up at 5 a.m. This, this hustle mentality of and that's what we see a lot in social media right now. It's pushing like the younger generation to a point where they're just like, if I don't do the X, Y, Z, what everyone else is doing, I'm not successful. And things take time. It's not just in a day you wake up, the results are there, you know? But you also have to know what you're good at. Like we're talking yesterday with my team. Like I'm very good at, example, with the watches and delivering. Yeah. My partner, he's very good at sourcing it and delivering it to me. And then like my marketing team, it's like, okay, we'll come up with this idea. Let's do this, this, this. And they're able to edit it right away. Yeah. You got to know what I call your superpower. Yeah. Now with this superpower, you use this superpower, then you start networking. But mm -hmm. there's so many different ways of networking, especially now. Yeah. Like some people got famous from like, you know, networking on, through Discord. Some people made it, you know, through, so like, like from Twitter, from Instagram, th there's way, there's so many different ways that yeah. people can go and make it. But then it's, it's funny. It's like, when do you get that? What do you do with it? Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, for me, I think it's first like figure out what your superpower is. Yeah. Which... I know it's like I have like ability when, you know, like people's like, okay, the trust, people trust you, um, you know, use that to advantage, which was also like created through time. And then it's like understanding, like, I'm, I think I'm very caring. Like I understand where you're going through. So like, that's why when we're talking about, you know, your watch, when we're delivering it and everything, I understand everything you're thinking. Yeah. It's like, as if like I'm answering your question before you even like the, you even ask it. So yeah. it's like, so it's, I think that's what it is, but the, the, like, I don't know. I th I think, like, I, I just, again, I really just don't know. Like, I, I also, like, when I say don't run after life, like, it's, like, not controlled. Like, if it's, like, yeah. like when I had my startup and I closed it, I was, like, oh, okay, you make it. You, you, okay, so what? It's a big yeah. deal. I didn't make it. Okay, next. On to the next project. It's, it's I think I think a up. core part of what you're saying, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you, but, like, a core part of all of this, I think, entails into really down to you enjoying the entire process, the journey, the whole, you know, getting like it's not really getting to the end goal it's the entire process in itself and part of enjoying that journey is is your time management and how you can like while you're working and doing xyz and and you know doing all these things that it requires to become a successful like business owner in any shape or form it's it's managing your time effectively so you t you spoke about a team that you have right i really want to talk about this a bit more because i think this is really beneficial to a lot of people who are in the same position why is it important to have a team in, in any aspect, because really, like, with like, let's imagine Big Mo right now, and you took away the team. How is life? Is it different? Like, you see what I mean? Like, what what is what is the be like? Why is it so crucial for you to have your team? So, I want to touch on one point before I get into that one question. Is that you were talking about successful? Mm -hmm. So what's funny is that like when I was failing in my startup and everything, and I was miserable. My father's like, you know, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, You're the most successful you've ever been i'm like what yeah i've lost all my power so like example in terms of fame is all gone yeah it's like at least i think 10 years or five or seven years um i i went out of the in event industry yeah the wealth wasn't there like it used to be yeah and then he's like yeah but you're checking up on your brothers and sisters mm -hmm. you're checking up on your parents all the time yeah you always you know may she rest in peace my grandmother always going to see her and, and checking up on her mm -hmm. checking in with your friends um, you know, like always doing other things that it's like, 
these things you would never do because you're running after money and power. It's like, and it's like, you know, you're going to the gym, you're taking care of your health, you're, you're you know, having healthy conversation. Now it's like your your main focus has changed. Yeah. It's like once you're able to balance those things, mm-hmm. that is true to success. Nice. It's like when you're saying, okay, you know, if you know, hopefully one day you meet that girl. Yeah. Like then it's like, okay, well, how do you balance your 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 life with that girl? How do you balance that with your friends? Yeah. And you do that, you know. So it's like, and I learned from a lot of people around me that do that. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to have that touch point because a lot of people think success is all about, you know, if it's from the brand and the stuff you buy and wear. But I think it's also how you treat people, including the people, which is in a way, that's my first thing, which is your family. Yeah. So that's like, it's like, you know, I didn't, I couldn't go through what I went through without my father. Like he was like, like I think my father and my friend Nadim, um, even my friend Kareem, they're just like constantly bringing me up. It's like, man, you, you know, I keep, love that. You like yeah. keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. So I think it's like your core, which is like, the love they have of just you know just who i am muhammad this is yeah. this is muhammad we love this guy uh, my sister all the time you know she, she sent me the most beautiful quote ever it's like before god makes your dream come true uh, reflect on all the other dreams he made come true yeah which one of them was to come to dubai which was i was living in within a dream so yeah. while you're with, living within one of the prayers god answered there's another one you know he's about to answer the other one enjoy that yeah so i think that's where it starts I think that's gold because I think that really is your first team. If you think yeah. about it, right? Your family, your your mom, your dad, like, you know, like that really is your first element of support. And then it goes into, you know. Then it goes like into the, the work stuff yeah. because because that, that's the values that they give in. It's like more like, you know, like example, you know, like so if someone says example, hey, Mo, here's a transaction. This happens so many times they pay me more. Yeah. So it was like, well, why do you give back the money? I'm like, it's not about the money, but it's like your morals, your values. Yeah. You have no idea how many times this happened to me. Mm-hmm. You have no idea how many times I have extra money in my hand from clients. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I have to go give this back. Yeah. So, too many times. Yeah. You know, which I guess is a good problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But it shows like it's like these are ta- like these are like it's like your 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 values. Yeah. And this is embedded from you know my parents, from my brothers, my sisters, and how you treat with each other. Yeah. And once you're like that, you're able now to build the next layer. So it's yeah. like example, you know, your friends. So like example, my best friends from like Nadim. Uh, can even all these other guys that they're helping me now we go back into like from this what do you do from networking you're able to say it's like well what's the piece i need to next mm-hmm. so it's like okay my partner you know he's, he's like and it's also i guess it's like it's like we want one vision which is we all succeed yeah like it's like this could help you let me help you uh, this could help you let me like we're always helping each other we have each other's backs yeah it's not a competition yeah and it's not about the money we're, this is the vision it's like hey we're trying to do this mm-hmm they will also look at you like you're crazy, but like, okay, let's, it's doable. Let's yeah. do it. So I think you start with that. And I also think there's, um, like, you know, I, I, it's, it's like also, it, it goes back to like me, there's not one big mo. Yeah. Like you're, you're an amazing guy. Like w- w- again, once we, we clicked, you, you know, your values, um, you know, your, your values, the, the way you work, your ethics, they're all aligned. That's why we're here today. That's yeah. how we, you know, I've met a lot of people. It's not like I'm, I'm doing podcasts with all of them. Yeah. You know, so you, you see that and you build off that. Exactly. So yeah. that's what happened with my marketing team. I'm like, hey, you have the same values as me. Mm-hmm. That's how I met them. Like, I'm looking, I'm like, you know, man, they, they have the same values as me. Then I see what they do. Then I connected with them because of that. But yes, did I know I need that talent? I am looking for that talent. But I think that's where it's like the communication, yeah, uh, the transparency, the understanding. And then you're like, wow, man, like, that's the thing I love about Dubai, man. A lot of people want to talk, like, I, t- I talk about the positive things especially we're coming in July, it's very hot outside, but, yeah. like it's, <laughs> but you want to talk about like the things about you meet and it's like finding like-minded people that yeah. are like hungry, wanting to grow together and having that little mini family together or, or like, I think Vin Diesel calls about that. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Family, family, family. family. Yeah. yeah, but there's that, but I'm, I'm saying it starts with the original, which is your, your, your parents, your values that they put in, in front of you and they, they practice what they're preaching. It's not yeah. like they're saying something and you do something else and then how you treat other people and you go to that. But, I think it's just your values, and then you implement it. If you're all about money, yeah, then you're gonna build a team that's gonna be all about money. I think that's so powerful the way you just said, yeah. Because I really like, I think we've done that without realizing the entire time in our process when we've hired anyone in our team. It's always been from a value perspective. Now that I think about it, as opposed to any kind of money, but the gem really there is, like you said, if it's from a money perspective, your team all they're gonna care about is money. Or if it's a, if it's your core values instilled in your team when you're making decisions of who to bring in, of who to align, and it really does make sense because you know you'll know when the fit is right. Your values line up. Like for example, you're right. This is why this conversation is happening in the first place, right? 
Um, this is why we called you to say, you know, I want to bring Big Mo on because I you know, love that guy in the sense of how we can chat and talk in terms of business. And I think that's phenomenally like powerful and overlooked so much today in terms of when people are trying to grow something bigger. It's always money focused as opposed to your core values because that core values builds trust. That trust builds your audience. That audience allows you to do what you want to do. And you have that community, like yeah. you know, the, the, the Papa Fam family, like it's like... Um you have that community that you you've built from that and it yeah. comes from that but it's not like everyone's money hungry through that yeah versus other people that are going and building communities that are just money hungry well then okay go be a bunch of piranhas and go yeah. go crazy but I, i've yet to see that succeed long term yeah i've yet to see it and 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 you know we're talking about it yesterday with the guys it's just like you know like things evolve like okay you didn't learn the start didn't work out well i learned a lot of things let me reinvent myself but the values and the core is like always helping like what's again in business there's a problem how are you solving it how are you helping yeah what's the value added yeah and you build that community that's around it but and i think like for my first business all you know the the success and and, and the money that was made that was never planned yeah it was i'm a student just going to have fun and i'm like you know and i only can reflect on that now I, before he's like you you some people say like, no, I did that. I did, dude, you didn't do nothing, man. Yeah. And, and Nadim says it. It's it, it's luck, man. Yeah. A lot of times it's luck. Yeah. Like it's like you know like, the, the luck plays a you know a huge role, but people won't talk about that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So it's like, I went and have it fun. Okay, do it. And then you can't think. That's why I'll tell people. It's like your team. Like you, you have an amazing team. I have an amazing team. Mm -hmm. And it's like you work on that and how you grow more like-minded people. And it's like you said, you have that community, you have that family, and it it's able to. I find it grows naturally without it being stressed. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and and I feel you make a thousand x more money than when, like if you put yourself in your perspective. Let's say a year ago, did you think you're going to be where you're at today? No with, way. With, with the amount of money? No way. And if I thought about it, if from a money driven perspective, we wouldn't have made it to this point. So yeah. But but how about now? You look at it. So it's all about perspective. You want to look at it through money. This is what we made. How about like through people? Yeah. For me, What's, I value. I honestly measure this success in. Now, who I'm surrounded by, the people, who my team are, yeah, the people, you're right. But because that also, yeah. in a way, quote unquote, will protect the like if you have the right people with just knowledge, you're yeah. able to do that. Now, if you go look at it in terms of experiences, yeah. So, example for the people, like if he's like, oh man, I did like if it's like, oh my first one that went viral, how do you put money behind that? Yeah. So a lot of people look at things as just like in two categories: the power or the money or that. But it's like, well, you know, look where you, how long, far you've gone from the YouTube, what you've grown as your your brand. Um, you know, as educating like other people, like what I'm doing, watching you do the same thing. Like I said, I, I watch a lot of your stuff and learning. It's just enjoyable, like just to learn knowledge. And you have those things, but you don't realize you're touching a lot of people's lives and you're changing that. But it's not about end goal, money, 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 money. Yeah. So I think that's that's something that a lot of people don't take that lens and look at through the perspective of look at all these amazing people I've I've met. Look at this, you know, these other experiences I've met. Look at how much you've grown as a person. Mm, exactly yeah you know true. so yeah. i think that's something that uh, more people or more people that talk about these things should yeah. talk about those um different pr perspective lens instead of money and power but i guess it's very easy to sell it's like hey you want to i have a lambo i have a penthouse i have a rolls royce yeah. and i think again like, it, honestly i think those things that you mentioned are, it's it's easy to see through it at, at a certain point like yes it will attract a certain kind of person this whole thing comes down to you want to attract the right people because but that's... your intention is what, though? Intention is to help. No, but let's say if I'm going promoting Lamborghini, what's my intention? Is it if I'm promoting a Lamborghini? Yeah. No, like, let's say... Well, uh, no, I love cars. Let's yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Let's get out the way yeah. I love cars. Yeah. But I'm saying if you're promoting, it's like, you want to have this, be like this, be like me. Like, if you're pushing that so much or if it's the women or if it's a lifestyle. Yeah. But that's promoting something. Like, you get what I mean? It's versus like... But which is which is unfortunate. This is the world we live in. That will go more viral. We'll get more views. We'll yeah. get more hits. Yeah. Versus the, okay, well, you know, I'm being the nice guy. And it's funny because like, you know, through my journey, I'll never forget this. Yeah. One guy said, Mo, you are the first person I meet that I could honestly say, nice guys finish first. That's nice. Yeah. So he's like, you know, it's like you are a proof. Yeah. Because he was learned to go the other way. Yeah. And he's like, you are a proof that nice guys finish first. And it's, it's like you said, man, it's a journey, man. It's not like tomorrow, boom. Yeah. So you wake up, take you take the day to the fullest, like my mom says, and, and you know, just do the best you can. And that's th huge, and that's man. It, man. That's a powerful note to, to wrap up on. Honestly, Mo, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. I think of we course. could be talking for 
ages. I think yeah, next man. time we should do the maybe two, three hours, you know. No, for sure, man. But if fun. everyone uh, wants to, if anyone wants to find you, uh, they can find you at Big Mo on Instagram. Uh, Big Mo Inc. is my Big handle. Mo Inc. Big, Big Mo Inc. I N C B I G M O E I N C. That's it. And then we'll link it in the description yeah. as well. Feel free to reach out to Mo. He's a trusted guy in terms of, honestly, I'm going to be doing a lot more <laughs> business with Mo. Um, and yeah, we'll be doing some cool stuff together. If you guys liked the video and you know, you're enjoying this, make sure you follow us on all the platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, of course, like and subscribe. And as always, yeah, we will see you in the next video. Everybody love you.